What's up guys? Welcome to Cryo FX YouTube channel. Today's video is on liquid CO2 valves. Why would you want to know about a liquid CO2 valve? Well, probably because you're dealing with CO2 special effects. Also, these valves are called cryogenic valves, liquid nitrogen valves. So I want to just make sure that you understand the couple of the differences between the valves. We're going to do a general overview of these valves. And then on other videos that I have a link in the description, we're gonna talk about the individual valves. As a CO2 valve manufacturer and a liquid nitrogen valve manufacturer, we know valves. And we wanna make sure that you know the valves just like we know them so that you can be in the know about what valves you need during what type of special effects and things like that. If you have a valve that's leaking, that'll be another video. CO2 valve leaking is what you may search to try to find something like that. We're gonna do a whole nother video just on that. CO2 valve solenoid, we got that for you too. This is the CO2 valve solenoid. Yes, we're jumping right in, baby. So what this is, is this is actually the coil of the valve. The valve itself, as you see here, we have a couple different ones. So you have two pieces and the coil goes on top of the solenoid valve itself. And that makes a complete set. So if you wanna know what a liquid CO2 valve is, you're looking at a bunch of them right here. This is actually one of our premier products. You have a CO2, liquid CO2 valve. You have the bracket here. This valve specifically deals with liquid CO2. Why does that make a difference? Liquid CO2 runs a lot colder than gaseous CO2. They're both about the same pressures. You have anywhere between 800 to 900 PSI. Don't wanna bore you with the details here, but if you don't get the right valve to handle the right temperatures, you're gonna have a problem. The seats and seals inside the valve are going to cause you problems. You ask, what are the seats and seals? Without getting too close here, you have little O-rings inside. You have different seals inside the valves. You have a seal right here that goes on the outside, another seal on the inside. Again, we're not gonna do a close up on this video, but I just wanna cover the basics here. Those seats and seals, if they're not right, you have PTFE, you have Teflon, you have, there's a, there's a number of different variants and types. And if you get the wrong type, you're gonna have a problem because it's gonna get cold. The valve's gonna get super cold. These uh, liquid CO2 valves can get up to, or down to, I should say, negative 40 degrees. Yes, that's very cold. So wrong seats and seals, you're gonna have a CO2 valve leak and it's gonna leak and it's gonna be problematic. So you don't want that. Now, why is there a bunch of different valves? Without getting too crazy into this, this is a liquid CO2 valve. This is a liquid CO2 valve or also in the category of cryogenic valves. This particular valve is a liquid nitrogen valve. Now, the base of this valve and the structure of it can handle the pressures, but why you have a longer neck? Because the temperature, liquid nitrogen, gets a lot colder than liquid CO2, and therefore, you need to separate the coil where the electromagnet activates the piston inside, and you need to make sure that's separate from this area that's gonna get really cold. Another video just on that. So this is also a cryogenic valve. This is a cryogenic valve. These are CO2. Liquid CO2 valves, this is a liquid nitrogen valve. You kind of get the picture here? Liquid CO2, liquid nitrogen, cryogenic, the umbrella. Okay, horrible, de horrible description there, but you get what I'm talking about. This is another type of valve. Internally, we call this the beer can valve. Why? Because it looks like a beer can, and we've actually hit this inside beer cans before for some of our clients, so that is a whole nother conversation. Liquid CO2 valves that appear in CO2 jets. So if you're searching for a CO2 jet valve or a CO2 jet solenoid valve, you're probably gonna see something like this, or you're gonna see something like this. These are the two generic valves that are in CO2 jets. General CO2 jets that you see anywhere in nightclubs or on our website or on competitors' websites, those are them. Some of them, if you're getting ripped off, I'll say this, are gonna look like this, <laughs> a lot smaller. Smaller valve, smaller output, smaller orifice, smaller all the lines and the runs inside the valve bar, bringing it down the layman's terms. This is also a liquid CO2 valve. This is what we call our round CO2 valve. We have this for sale on our website, so as the same as all these other valves as well. Now, what makes this valve different? This valve specifically 
has a three millimeter orifice. And you ask, what is an orifice? An orifice is the smallest part of the inside of the valve. So whenever you have a CO2 system or a liquid CO2 system or any gaseous or liquid system, the smallest part of that system is going to be the most restrictive. Yes, that makes sense, right? This three millimeter, these ones, these are about 12 millimeter. And then you have something like this, which is a 20 millimeter. Now you can see here, this is much bigger. This is also a liquid CO2 valve. What do these mean? This is going to put out a lot more than this. So you're going to need a couple of these to equal this. I'm not good at math while I'm live on video, so don't ask me to quote that. But if I'd have to say 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, you get what I'm saying there, okay? So this, you're going to get a lot bigger output compared to some of these other ones. When you're ordering valves, there's one most important thing that you need to take into consideration. And I slightly mentioned it, but I want to elaborate. And what is that? Seats and seals and valve type. This is extremely important. What working temperature is the valve? What pressures can the valve hold? And of course, the seats and seals that are inside. We'll make a link below and have a reference guide in there that shows the different seats and seals and the temperatures and pressures that they can work at. And this is important because when you're dealing with cryogenics and cryogenic valves, liquid CO2 valves, liquid nitrogen valves, regardless, you're dealing with super cold temperatures, super critical temperatures in some respects, and more importantly, different types of material can handle different temperatures. Now, you have you may have a difference and or a specific need for these types of liquid co2 valves i can't tell you what your need is all i can do is tell you what they are and how they work how they work is on another video what they are we just covered that baby on this video so if you want any more information or if you have questions leave a comment below don't forget to subscribe to the channel we have a lot of videos coming up and of course hit that like button if you like the presentation if not well there's no middle finger on there, but there is a dislike button. I wouldn't recommend hitting that though, because then our video is not going to be shown to a lot of people. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. This covered the generic liquid CO2 valve, whether it's a CO2 jet solenoid valve, a CO2 jet valve in short, or liquid CO2 valves, liquid nitrogen valves, bing, bing, boom, we're all over the place here. You got a valve, CO2, liquid, nitrogen, mix those up, valve was the main purpose of this video. Thanks for watching, I'm Chris with Cryo Effects.